thought teaching history couldn't get any harder, think again. With a growing involvement and constant debate between non-educators, teaching history just got a lot harder. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cecilia Thomas, and I'm a veteran educator and educational consultant. I help passionate new history teachers feel confident and competent even as first year teachers. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel where I share weekly insights, support strategies, and candid advice about teaching social studies. So let me get right to the point. One of the biggest challenges of our time is that non-educators are making decisions about how and what history teachers teach in their classroom. And I mean, I get it. Teachers are here to service the community, but the problem is that our subject area is being used as a political battleground. You see, what makes it so challenging for history teachers is that society is so married to the idea that you have to be either in one camp or the other, that they don't allow history teachers the flexibility and the confidence to really explore history with their students from an omniscient point of view. So let me give you an example. You know, I feel like with distance learning, there has been so much intrusion into the actual classroom environment that even if you're a history teacher that's trying to do right by your students and expose all different perspectives pertaining to an event that your students may undoubtedly be asking about in class because there have been so many things going on these past years that they're going to ask questions. And even with the best of intention of trying to present all viewpoints, if your students happen to reach a conclusion on their own based on the evidence that doesn't align to their family's values, then the assumption is, oh, that teacher's trying to push some sort of political agenda on the class. You see, what I've observed is that there's a tendency to assume that if we're sharing an unpopular topic with our students, then we're most assuredly trying to advance some sort of political agenda. But here's a little wisdom nugget for all my non-history friends who may be watching this video. As a trained historian with a master's degree, I have been trained, we are trained, to understand that history is not a dead record. History is actually a living, changing interpretation and investigation of an event or a person. You see, as historians, we understand that the interpretation of an event will undoubtedly change over time. And that's because as new information surfaces and as our perspective and experience and our values change as a society, our interpretation of a historical event will change as well. So no matter what we do, our interpretation of history will change. This means that a person that may have been seen as a hero in the past can all of a sudden become a villain. So why? How does this even happen? I want you to think of a person that you used to respect or idolize. Now imagine that you discover something about this person that completely shatters the image of who you thought they were. And you throw their picture away. Now, you're not trying to erase the memory of that person. You can't. They were a huge part of your life. They were real. They existed. But you also know that by holding on to their picture, you keep bringing back old pains that remind you of how foolish you were for ever having idolized this person to begin with, especially this person who may have caused you some sort of pain. So I want you to apply this analogy to how scandalized people were last summer when they were taking down all these Confederate statues and really apply and understand how this historical shift happens and how the heroes of one day can actually become the villains of the next. And it's not necessarily that teachers are trying to villainize any specific person. I think that more than anything, they just don't feel confident in the fact that they can openly address all the complexities and all the dynamics that make up a person's role in history, you know, and, and really explore how that person's image may change if our values as a society change. So as we broaden our mindset to indulge new information, new perspectives, we have a better understanding of our collective experiences versus one singular truth. So I'm going to hit you with another example. 
Think of a time when your sibling blamed you for something you didn't do. And because you weren't there to defend yourself, your parents accepted your sibling's version of the story as the unquestionable truth. And you are grounded. Okay, so I gotta know, did that ever happen to you growing up? If you can relate, drop your version of the story below. You gotta set the record straight. See, the challenge is that we forget that collectively the story of an event belongs to everyone involved. And so the omission of a record doesn't mean that there's only one truth. It actually begs the question of why that record, that version of the story is being omitted. To what point and purpose? New House Bills, for example, Texas House Bill 3979, which places a strong emphasis on creating an unbiased historical interpretation within social studies classrooms. Just the wording in that bill, and I'll go ahead and link it below so you can read it on your own. That wording and that phrasing just lets me know that the folks making these laws have absolutely zero historical training. Because if they did, then they would understand that everything in history has a bias. Records are written from the perspective of the person writing it. It doesn't make that person's version the collective truth. It makes it one of many versions of the truth. That's only one person's side of the story. For this reason, we find it challenging that our desire to expose our students to a variety of resources is questioned as a personal bias reflected in our own teaching. As certified professionals in our field and having been required to take historiography courses in which we study the way history is studied. Trust me, we know our bias. We just wanna make sure that our students are as informed as possible. Now, I want you to think back to when you were a child. Initially, as children, we're taught right from wrong based on our family's values. What they tell us is the right way to worship, the right thing to do. We're spoon-fed this information with no other versions to make us question anything. But as we grow and develop and have different experiences growing up and we're exposed to different ways of worshiping, different lifestyles, different behavior, different professions, then we're able to make up our own mind about whether what we were originally taught actually aligns with who we are, who we want to be, and what we value. Now, we already talked about the fact that Every historical resource is biased in their own way. And it takes a lot of biased versions together to really consolidate what actually happened from everyone's vantage point. We also talked about legislation that emphasizes teaching history as unbiased as possible and the conflict that history teachers have with being able to actually share all the different versions of a story. But there's an added layer here. Because as educators, we have the additional and ethical responsibility to guide our students, to inform our students so that they can become good citizens of the world. And the thing is that when a child is not guided in right from wrong and all these different versions are presented without any sort of guidance on what is considered moral and just and good citizenship, and if we don't expose our students to the wider narrative of which they're a part of, could that child grow up clinging to erroneous ideas or misconceptions? Absolutely. When I was in high school, I was sitting in chemistry class and a brand new student that had just enrolled was asked a question by a curious cheerleader classmate of ours. And she politely asked this young man where he was from. And he replied, and I quote, I'm from Alabama where we have the KKK and we don't like black people. Now here's where, again, challenges arise for history teachers because can a person with historical training and can an educator, a public servant whose responsibility it is to shape these young adults, these, these children into future citizens of the world, can we in good faith ignore a statement like that simply because it might imply that we're forcing our political beliefs and our political agendas upon the student? Or can we all agree that we're all invested in making America a more humane, tolerant, peaceful, and safe place for everybody? 
You know, often overlooked, our subject area has held space for generations of Americans to contemplate introspectively what this country is about, what it stands for, and in what direction we want our collective image as a country to go. I think overall as history teachers, we know and understand that a partial purpose of our course is to instill love for our country. But I also feel that in order to feel proud of a country that we live in, we need to know our country and we also need to explore the demons that have plagued our country in order to challenge ourselves to choose better so that we can be proud of it. Unless space is held for teachers to fearlessly like plunge in and address the not so pretty past, we as a nation will continue to cling to ideologies that are not aligned to the context in which our children will live in as adults. Because think about how confusing it would be for our students to learn one truth in school and live a different truth outside of school. Things like the popularization of critical race theory and also moves from the states to ban the teaching of certain historical topics or certain concepts complicate our ability as teachers to induce our students to look at all perspectives objectively. I mean, it's already hard enough because there's just so much emotion involved, but literally having to be the middle ground for this debate to hash out makes our jobs so much more valuable, important, but also challenging. If you're a new history teacher that wants to create an inclusive space for all your students, I highly recommend that you watch my video on how to be an inclusive teacher and also my other video on inclusive classroom management. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, class dismissed.